Yes, if I could turn back time, I wonder what I would do. And talking about turning back time, still sitting here with Colin Chisholm. Colin, eh, just great stuff. That that last song that we played, The Reputation. Yeah. How big is that? Oh, it's like a tsunami, isn't it? We were just talking about that. It just come, it, keeps coming and coming and coming. It's just brilliant, yeah, It's isn't a it? big song, aye, aye, Great song. Now, we've been through through most of your career, and uh, then obviously you were doing the solo stuff, and you were doing the, the voiceovers and, and stuff as well, but mm-hmm. you, you took a period of illness, and, and you had a problem with your throat, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, it, it was well, it wasn't really a period of illness, I suppose. I mean, that, that's maybe. Um, well, sorry, when, I, I, when, I, when your your main tool for I, working doesn't yeah, work. I, I, I beg your pardon. I um, <laughs> <laughs> didn't know you were going to talk about tools. Um, no, I, I developed. A, at first, it was a cyst on my vocal cord, and um, I've just decided I'm speaking very properly. I developed a cyst on my vocal cord. <laughs> I developed a cyst on right. Developed a cyst on my vocal cord, and. Um, didn't know what it was at first, so went and had it removed. So I took, um, at that time, six months off, and I, I didn't sing for six months. Mm-hmm. And I think I came back too quick, because over the next year and a half, two years, something else started happening on, on uh, the vocal cords. And it was getting to the stage when I was doing gigs, I didn't know what was going to come out next, you know, and you yeah. were singing away, and I thought well, you were supposed to be good. <laughs> and then sometimes it was okay, so... You would have been all right in your I, 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 Frank, I feel the voice. Um, so... I then went back to the, the specialist and had a, he had a look at it with a big lamp and down you go with the, the endoscope and things and developed, I saw that there was something else developing on the other vocal cord. So there was something on one vocal cord, but a shadow on the other. And that's when they wheeled me in pretty damn quick uh, because there was obviously many implications of what it could be. It wasn't. Uh, all that had happened was it was a collapsed cyst and it had been rubbing against the other vocal cord and it caused a lesion and mm-hmm. that was what that shadow was but I got a fright um, so I was off I, I decided this time I'll take longer off so I, I took a year off which became two, three, four, five, six, seven years um, and that was basically because of stage fright more than anything I was frightened to go out and push it I was frightened to, mm. to really um, because b- before I'd gone in for the operation it was getting to the stage I couldn't speak I was taking a run at everything like that to get the breath to the best way to describe it and it was described really well by the consultant he says what's been happening if you imagine a violin and you pluck the violin string and it goes bang, yep. right? You just touch it with a bit of cotton wool, it'll go bang, bang. Uh-huh. He says, and exactly that is what's happening to your vocal cord, and you're having to force that bang, bang. You know, you're forcing it, forcing it, and you're making it worse and worse. Thickened vocal cords, collapse cyst, ain't good for you. No. Um, so I took all that time off. But anyway, um, I came back gradually and started doing a lot of session work down in London. And um, the more I did that, and the more I was singing in studios, the more I, I got the confidence back. And then eventually, I did one gig, and then uh, I left it a month, and I did another, and it started to pick up again. And now I'm back to full fight and fit, fine. So, if we could turn back time, would you, would you have entered some of these competitions? You know, I know, I know that Chloe put you in for the for the competition. But, yeah, I, you know, I, if if these competitions were when you were younger. You know, I know you did the opportunity in Ox, but if you know if there was stuff like the voice that was around when you were younger, and uh, you know you were you were in that, you know that I'm going to say the peak. Yeah, yeah, you know, oh, when, not quite you know when you, was, when vocally you just yep, want to yep, go for it. Yep, you know, yep. um, would I have thought that it wouldn't have been cool? Um, <laughs> <laughs> there, uh, there's the question yeah, really. yeah would it have been uncool because I was in a band and I was going to be this that and the next thing no um, I wish the opportunities had been there at that time or, or maybe you know even once Bilbo had split up because you know when I was round about the 30 mark which was nearly three years ago now folks um, <laughs> you're, about, you're only counting the winners aye aye aye, aye. <laughs> uh, had it been at that point yeah I, I think I would have but when I got to my age and, and uh, would I have entered not a chance <laughs> no but my daughter's so better of it. But you're I'm glad that you did. Oh dear, I. Oh so man. hopefully people will see you in the battle rounds uh, yep. Yep. in the next couple of weeks. It's yes. not going to be this week because it's a Eurovision Song Contest. Uh-huh. Um, and well, on the behalf of everybody at Black Diamond and Middle Lothian, uh, we want to wish you the very best of luck. We will be punting, as soon as I find out, let us know when the battle's on. Yeah. And uh, we'll be punting it as much as we possibly can. Well, if I can say just before uh, uh, you're... Um, be finishing up bit there, Mark. And I thank everybody because I have had phenomenal support um, from people that have met me in shopping centres and uh, I've even got papped. That was ridiculous. I got papped by a paparazzi guy. Anyway, that's another story. Um, people that have come up and just to wish me well. The stuff I've had through Facebook um, is incredible. People that I've not heard of or seen or heard anything from for the last 30, 40 years I've been in touch. And even people that don't know me have just you know, warm to me and it's been fantastic. So 
Everybody out there that's listening, thanks very much. Diamond, thanks very much. It's just great. I'm having a blast. Well, as I say, all the very best there. The very best luck. We're going to... Uh, well, it comes down... To, you're an old pro. It comes down to just in the battle rounds, you know, just fighting against each other and out oh, singing. Right. Out just singing. kick them in the gonads. <laughs> Do you know who you're up against? Are you allowed to say? I, 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 I am not allowed to say, really. Okay. I, I know there's lots of things that you're not allowed to say. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to play a final song of yours, which is uh, Too Late to Love You. Mm -hmm. Tell us a wee bit about this. Well, I wrote this for you, Mark. Oh, lovely. Thanks, dear. Um, no, this was from a musical called McGregor's Trap, which, um, again, written by Brian Spence. Uh, the whole musical was written by Brian Spence. Um, this is a great song. It's a, a song about a father um, who eventually has made up with his son after being away from him all the son's life. Um, only to find his son uh, while the son is dying. And uh, he sings to his son, and it's called It's Too Late to Love You. Oh, my son, my darling son, we have moment but now it's gone but you taught me more more than a lifetime taught me to now it's too late to love you and all those dreams my mind have seen if I should have been But I was never there I missed every baby step you took Now it's too late to love you I'm gonna miss you, son.